are we actually optimizing away these checks here? Probably not. The compiler is probably not smart enough to do it. So now we have the loop. Wow, what, what is going on? Um, L10. Move to Wait. Oh, here it starts there. It's still comparing both. How, how stupid is this compiler? How stupid is this compiler? Okay, here at least it got rid of one of the checks. Which one is it still testing? Here it is still testing both X and Y. That doesn't make sense. Because yeah, it might not be smart enough to know that Y is at least two. So ECX is the Y. The Y is still compared. Oh. Okay. Okay, this also has to do with the way that the test is written, I guess. Because it's written in an unsigned way that uses the wraparound. And this is probably, yeah, this the compiler cannot do this. It's not smart enough for that. We need to help it a bit. We need to help. And one thing I could think of is what we could do, let's first do it only for y. Let's do, let's say boolean, boolean check y. And this will be a const expression. And now, uh, 
Um, how do we do that? We could we could do something like const expression the minimum y. We could pass in the minimum y. So we only need to check y in this case, for example, y minus one. We never need to check this. So this, this would be false. Never check y. The minus ones, we only check if y min is smaller than one. Because if, yeah, otherwise we don't need to check it. Sorry. I mean, we could, we could we could make our lives easier if the compiler is at least moderately smart. We could just pass in, if we pass him in here, y min. The, no, we can never have a positive y offset, that's fine. And here we would pass in y min minus one. So this is a constant. So minus one, it's still a constant. It is still a constant. And for those, we would probably just say true, do the check. So for all those that have these template stuff, we won't do any smarts. I mean, if you use this adaptive crap, then you are probably responsible for any slowness that you get. When all of this is still not even close to the, the strongest optimizations that we could do here, Uh, we were, no. we make our lives <clears throat> a bit easier still, I think, by defaulting this to true. No. Ah, no. This is what I mean. By defaulting it to zero. Oh, uh, wait, 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 wait. I think this should be signed. This should be signed and should 
and should default probably to minus 128 because for the largest adaptive templates this is the minimum that we can get I think or minus 127 but, but I don't really care and actually I would I wanted to default so so here I would actually want to do y min default to this and we only check if y min is less than zero right otherwise this can never be a problem So here we just we just use the we use the default value. Oh, I should really go to sleep. I'm too tired. But I want to see some results. This is really screaming macros at this point. Okay, that was a mistake. Here I have, I could have copied the whole block. Yeah. No, no set, no cursor line, I meant no line. So so it will be smarter and just copy this block here. So many opportunities for mistakes. That's a bit scary. So we have now the y min here. Uh, we will also pass it to this function here. We actually won't default it. So here we don't really know anything about the y min. So it is at least one zero. That is what we know. Here it is at least one. And here there's least, at least two. And that should help to remove the Y check. Why can I not give it a const expression? Does this not work for arguments? I mean, we can try if the compiler is smart enough. I mean, this is also that we will definitely force inline. Be completely crazy not to inline this. That would completely ruin our, our performance.
Let's see if it is smart enough, otherwise we must do something template-y. Where are we? I need to make my tool also work for this kind of stuff. There are so many instances of this template. Which one are we looking at? Okay, I actually uh, want to zero 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 one eight. This one. How does this look like? Only one check. Only one check. Only one check. Here we have two checks. But we are in the first row, so that is okay. But now we get to the second row. We should almost always see only one check. Here's one with two checks. How many should we have? Let's see. The, let's look at the template. We are using template zero. Uh, so in the second row, we need to check for these one, two, three, four, five. So I would think for five ones. So in the first row, we need to check for these two. In the second row, we need to check only for those. Should be five. It does seem less than five. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, these are actually the wrong. But, uh, so once again, what which one is this? So no typical. Template zero, X is zero, uses only defaults and eight. Yeah, whatever. Let's let's run it. I like this 51. Ninety. 
cool. We are down a lot from 120. We saved one quarter of the cycles already. Let's see if there is still some test working. Oh, we have a fail. That's not so good. Let's look at that. Okay. Fail in arithmetic decoding. That's not so good. So the, yeah, the Huffman decoding still works, but the arithmetic decoding has a problem. So we broke something. Seven, two, six. Okay, no unexpected number of bytes left. So something broke in the arithmetic decoder here. Okay, I will not debug that today. What I want to look at is quickly just if the symbols still look like symbols. So let's do this once. Let's do this not five times, but one time each. So we should see lots of stuff. Okay, that looks partially right, but Yeah, it, it's still, at least it's still decoding something that looks like symbols. That's as much as I wanted to know. There may be some detailed bug that we will find the next time. Yeah, this is still looking mostly reasonable. It looks like letters. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, the code did not get more beautiful by what we did today, that's clear. We will be able to do a similar thing for the X, for the X check.
Oh, and probably for the default ones. Actually, for those, I should actually actually calculate this y min plus because those are constant values here. We should do something like this. This is this is the last thing I tried today because I should really be doing that. This will be one, two, three. That should get rid of a few further checks, I guess. Oh, I need to remove that again and again do five iterations. The compile time is so slow, that's really a problem. So, uh, partial success. We could so far remove 25% of the cycles or so. Yeah, this did not, this did not really give some further advantage. We are at 90. 95 and uh, 90.5 so so we have 95 minus 25 percent yeah that we could gain today I mean, it also shows that my initial code wasn't too stupid and too excessively slow. Or maybe I just don't see what I... So maybe I'm missing some obvious things to optimize, but I don't think so because the, the assembler code doesn't look too unreasonable that is coming out of these templates now. Yeah, I think I will, the width and the height, I will move those out of the parameter struct.
Yeah, at, at least the source did not become that much larger. It's not not extreme. I mean, there is still some stuff missing, like. Hard edgy flags for other templates. I mean, this is also something I think we currently we currently always do this multiplication, which is stupid. This should really be we should really make a version here that does not do this that just uses a pointer for the row. And even that could even that could be simplified. But well, let's, okay, I, I still want to try this. So let's make this a bit more row pointer. Then we do not need this. Also the end one. So the shift is optimized away for sure, but the end one, maybe the end one, I, I need to check if the end one is actually optimized away, maybe not. I think it can, probably cannot be because compiler cannot know that our pixels only have a zero and one as in the pixel format we are using now. So let's, I need to see the result of this. Do we need the stride at all? So here, this this we do not need. Okay, here we need it, yeah, because here we must say minus minus stride. Okay, I think here we don't need it anymore.
this is also gone this is also gone and here we have bitmap pointer Let's try this how long I need it. This should get rid of a lot of modifications. Hmm, this broke something. Oh, stupid me. I still have these ones. Oh, no. And let's just try it for this one. So because what I forgot is that here here I still have to do the minus stride. Let's just try whether this works. I'm just too tired, so I'm losing my concentration on. So I definitely must fix this for the other templates also. Okay, still not right. Probably because of the Maybe because stride is unsigned and 32 bit. that this causes a problem in the minus two times 
maybe. Or in these multiplications, but yeah, could be. Yeah, that was one of the problems, but not the only one. Okay, I think I'm close to giving up for today. So this is definitely something that should, that should give us a benefit. Should give us a benefit. I'm not sure why it still doesn't work. Oh, well, maybe, maybe because of this, there should be plus here. Yeah, that was the problem. Okay, but we got worse. That's <laughs> strange. So it seems the multiplication was just done on an execution unit that is otherwise lying around, flapping around in the breeze. So it seems the multiplication was completely inconsequential that's how different cpus are today than in the old days in the old days the multiplication would have killed you and people did all kinds of crazy stuff in order to avoid multiplications yeah, we're still do, doing the end one, which is something that we can get rid of. We are now not doing the multiplications, but it doesn't buy us anything. They were free, it seems. Let's just, <coughs> it's always the problem that you try one thing and then one more thing and one more thing. It 
this is not just for trying this out. Because as long as we don't do half tone regions, we never have values other than zero and one here, so we don't need the end. But actually, this is or not the end of the horrors of JBIG2 because there's so much of JBIG2 that we still need to implement, like combination operators other than or and so on. So, how should you make such a thing fast? It's crazy. <clears throat> wow, that that bought us something. You still need to do it in a clean way, but that's something you can definitely do. And that, <laughs> it's really funny. You remove a multiplication, which is, I mean, digitally a huge operation that in on old, CPUs back in the days was very expensive and it doesn't give you any benefit. And then you remove a bitwise end and because, yeah, probably because it hits the execution units that are really crucial, it buys you a lot of cycles. That's <laughs> so strange nowadays. So, finally, let's calculate our total win today. Thirty six percent reduced, at least at this local level. And this should translate strongly to to the overall time. Which we currently do not print, but Do I, by the way, do I check if the yeah I do check the mean is zero so yeah we could the context building we could reduce quite a bit there are still more things to do because um, actually when you have a default template and you shift it by one then um, you can probably do most of the work just by shifting the context index by one bit to the left and then just plugging in plugging in the new up to three pixels that you need and dropping dropping by masking the ones that are shifted out so there are some some ways what we didn't really do today is to make the arithmetic decoder itself faster. I'm quite sure that there is there are some things to get there. Yeah, and we have such a nice histogram now. And it's getting even nicer and nicer all the time. <clears throat> okay, I'm done for today. People, I tell you, I'm done. So, thanks for watching if anybody's still around and hope to see you again next time. Bye.